Hi, welcome to the 2020 Nottingham International Film Festival. I am delighted to be joined by Nick Tausig and Ricardo Savini, the directors of the documentary A Space in Time. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. So, I suppose, as with any documentary, could you guys just tell me a little bit about how, what drew you to this particular subject matter? I think Nick can answer that one. <laughs> yeah, no, I... Um... Yeah, so I, my two sons were diagnosed uh, with a condition called Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which is a rare, uh, a rare childhood disease. Uh, about uh, about six years ago, six and a half years ago, and um, I think what often happens when it's a it's a fatal disease, which tends to tends to kill boys kind of in their late teens early 20s some actually live longer with the condition but it's it's a pretty horrible disease and spent the first couple of years with my wife just trying to deal with that reality and then slowly started thinking about a documentary uh captures some stuff along the way uh i also i run a production company and um fairly time poor between running the company and looking after my boys and everything else. And so I realized I desperately needed some help and needed just a really talented filmmaker to work alongside with. And so I met Rick and Rick just sort of said, look, I, I'm up for it. Rick actually um, suffers some Crohn's disease. And that was quite an important part of this whole project is actually, it's, um, it's really about, I suppose, taking something like disability, which is, often um, seen as kind of limiting and actually basically showing what's possible. And that kind of extends to kind of like the subject, the filmmakers, audiences, everything, you know, it's in one sense trying to sort of try to sort of turn disability on its head a bit and challenge that whole notion and kind of see what's, what is actually possible even when you, even when you carry that label in inverted commas. So yeah. And with it, obviously, it's incredibly brave of you to share such a personal story uh, on film with everybody. When, again, like you say, when you were sort of looking for outside help with Rick, Rick, what was it like being invited into this story? Um, yeah, it, it, this, it, it was interesting because I, I was kind of entering the documentary world um, and I was exploring stuff to do about um, having Crohn's and invisible illness in general. Um, and then I kind of got in contact with Nick about this and we kind of spoke and it all kind of happened really organically. And, um, but I, I didn't really know what to expect going in. Like you, it's such a intense subject matter and working with um, on such a personal story and actually having the filmmaker involved in um, the personal story as well, not just being the subject, but being involved in the story. It was, it was, it was tough, but it took me, it took me a few months to kind of get my head around it. Um, but as soon as I met the boys and kind of learned more about the, the condition, I was all in, like, I just, uh, there was nothing else. <laughs> there was nothing else for me to do creatively anymore. I was just like, this is what I'm doing. This is the most important thing I could possibly do in this moment. And I just completely went in. Cool. I suppose, let people know, how long were you filming for? How long was the filming process? So Nick had basically shot for years, kind of mobile phone type stuff, um, a little bit of, I guess, I guess kind of home, movie type stuff uh, to a degree. So most of the stuff that Nick handed me, he handed me years of kind of home movies and really personal kind of like, it was really kind of trusting to just give me his family's life on a hard drive for the last few years. Um, and I kind of took that and started piecing it together um, and seeing what we could do with this. We didn't really have a kind of clear idea of what the film was going to be. We just knew that we were trying to raise awareness and um, you know, explore, um, put Duchenne on, on screen basically for people. Cause I, I didn't know what Duchenne was before I got involved in the project. Um, 
and it's just incredibly important to raise awareness of these things and then um, that was about two years ago so basically in two years we've kind of gradually shot more stuff and we were kind of editing as we went along um, and because I, I got more and more passionate and more like into the project I kind of just kept suggesting to Nick things that we could try and do and then we just had discussions and Nick suggested we maybe get other families involved and that's how um, Alex and Harrison Smith came on board and then because it's a progressive um, condition we it, it was really important for us to show the future of the of, of Duchenne yeah. because obviously the kids were at the beginning of this process um, and that's when we got um, um, John Hasty, this like phenomenal <laughs> phenomenal man John Hasty, who is one of the oldest living Duchenne sufferers in the country involved and he kind of um, really set the film in the direction uh, that it became. Okay, and how can people find out more about it? Are there, if people want to find out more about the condition after watching the film or, or, or just from hearing this interview, is there somewhere they can go? Is there specific places they should go to find out about it? Yeah, I mean, actually, look, the film is actually, there's good news, actually, there's a, uh, there's a new company out there called Bohemia Media, which is uh, it's a nice. It's a good company actually. It's it's um, their focus is kind of telling diverse marginalised stories, and it's set up by quite an old film executive, a guy called Phil Hunt, who runs a quite a big film finance company called Headgear Films. And they took on the film because it's a it, again, it's it's disabilities tends to be pretty marginalised, uh, you know, throughout society, and so they're putting it out in February next year, which is great. So, you know, that's good news for the film. In terms of learning about uh, about Duchenne now, it's, uh, I'll, I'll actually, I'll, I'll spell it just for the benefit of everybody who's listening and wants to look it up. It's D-U-C-H-E-N-N-E. And um, yeah, I mean, look, it's it's kind of the most severe form of muscular dystrophy. It's, uh, there, are, there are many different types of muscular dystrophy, but this is the one that, that, that is genetic and kids are, you know, kids are born with, they're, they're diagnosed with them are about three and it 99% uh, of, of those affected are boys for whatever reason. So, yeah. Okay. And obviously, I mean, in terms of the documentary, obviously the documentarian gets to sort of walk away from it at the end of the day, whereas this is, this is your life. This is your living. With this. Are you going to continue documenting it from here? Is this something you're going to revisit again? Or is this in terms of the documenting side of things, where you're going to leave it? I think, look, it's it's a funny one. I mean, I, I I probably, I might do something different next time. I might write about it. I mean, there's, there's a wonderful filmmaker, a British filmmaker called Andrew Cotting, who made, you know, stuff like Leck and the Dogs and stuff. And Andrew's a mate. And he's a brilliant filmmaker. He's kind of in that sort of Peter Greenaway tradition. But he's, all his work is about his disabled daughter. He's got Joubert syndrome. Everything Andrew does. Uh, I don't think I'll, you know, the, look, it, you can't escape it because, of course, you're living with it. Uh, but it, but then you realize it's not about escaping it. It's about, it's just about, it's a new reality that you live with and accommodate and try and, you know, embrace in, in various ways. Um, I'm not sure Rick, actually, Rick, I'm not sure Rick will... Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, Rick actually said Rick might make something about Crohn's, actually. Yeah, I mean, the raising awareness of various conditions, illnesses and stuff like that is something I'm kind of very interested in. And I, I definitely know I'm going to probably, I mean, you never know, but I'm probably going to be doing something more in this space, um, whether it's about Duchenne or another disease. It depends, but I think there's just a wide, there's still a lot of wider stories about um, living as a disabled person or even being parents of disabled children. I think there's still stories to explore. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't, you know, I hope Nick doesn't mind me saying this, but I feel like I've become part of the family and I, you know, I care about the whole family, including like, you know, the boys and the whole family. and you know it, it they're part of my world and part of my family now so it, yeah you a lot of time on films you kind of just move on but i don't think you know i'm that's not what's going to happen 
And if people want to follow you guys in terms of your, like your future projects, if they want to be able to follow the future projects you do, uh, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, so probably my Twitter, um, which is Rick Bebop. So that's R I C B E B O P. Um, that's yeah. If you look that, and my website is my name, ricardosavini.com. Cool. We'll flash them up on screen. Cool. And Nick, is there? Are you? There's someone we can follow the your future work yeah. as well. The, the, yeah, the, the best the best one for me probably is just it's probably just the company one, which is so we're sell on pictures. Uk. Okay. Brilliant. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing um, such a, a beautiful and poignant film with us, guys. It's going to close the festival on Sunday night. So um, I encourage everyone to, to get a ticket and see the film. And then hopefully, are you, and you say it will be out next February, is that right? Yeah, end of, ne end of next February, that, that's, that's when it's going to be out. And it will be, it will be a kind of, it will be a multi-platform release. So in fact, they are going to do some stuff in cinemas. I think the idea is, which is a cool idea, is to um, essentially target those cinemas, which are generally accessible. Because yeah. often you find that places say they're accessible when you get there, they're not quite as accessible as they claim to be. Yeah. So the idea is, is we're doing it in a nice way, which is even even those cinemas that don't quite don't quite meet the accessible standard. You know, we can. The idea is we're working with a couple of good disability organisations that will then give them free advice to make sure that they can become genuinely accessible cinemas because. For disabled people, cinema is super important because it, uh, the condition is quite isolating, and, it, and any reason to kind of to get out, you know, I think it's interesting. My local cinema, you know, there's lots of you'll always see lots and lots of people with disabilities in the front row. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's an important place. Yeah, fantastic. Well, we'll make sure we share loads of information when that's uh, due to come out. So make sure right. you share that with us, and we'll share that through our social channels and promote it as much as we can. Thank you so much for joining me uh, for this chat this evening, guys. And um, uh, hopefully, I know everyone will love the film and good luck with uh, the release next year. Thanks. Thanks very much.